thinking let's get practical with it so if you had maybe do you have any sort of golden rules that the that the average person should be aware of in their relationship between uh well their relationship with sleep in terms of maybe their bedroom set and maybe yeah. their relationship <clears throat> with with artificial light before bed what are some of your sort of go-to rules? i think i think this is so important and <clears throat> i think we can divide um tricks and techniques in, into four sections what could we do during the day what should we do immediately before bed what can we do actually in the bedroom and what we do when we crawled into bed <clears throat> um and the first thing is during the day <clears throat> is get morning light morning light for 90 percent of us is what will set the body clock to the light dark cycle and make the sleep wake cycle stable um and i, I and i mean light light outside the clock is relatively insensitive to sleep to so the clock is relatively insensitive to light so we need the sorts of levels that we get outside um <clears throat> most of us live in dim dark caves and i think that's a problem so get outside get the light and in the winter get a light box um good 30 minutes of several thousand lux if you nap during the day make sure it's 20 minutes or less and make sure it's not uh, close to bedtime because what that nap will do is push back the sleep pressure meaning that you'll go to sleep later that night so for teenagers for example it's a real, real problem because they struggle to get to sleep at night they have shortened sleep and I'm, I, I sense you smiling here is am I is there some resonance here um, uh, uh, and, and therefore struggle you know fall, feel tired during the day uh, then have a two-hour sleep fairly close to bedtime pushes back the sleep pressure and then can't get to sleep that night. So it's a vicious circle. Um, <clears throat> exercise, absolutely brilliant, do it, but try not to do it too close to bedtime because what that will do is increase core body temperature. And part of falling asleep is a slight drop in core body temperature. And in fact, the clock is regulating our, our, the, the, the distribution of our blood. So it, sh it shoves it from the core to the skin and the hands and feet, which is why people last week were having such difficulty sleeping because they couldn't have that drop in core, core body temperature. So great, have, do the exercise, but not too close to bedtime. Um, avoid excessive uh, um, uh, consumption of things like caffeine uh, in the afternoon. For some people it can be extremely, uh, there's some people really sensitive and it has a long half-life, which means it hangs around in the body for a long time. So try not to have caffeinated drinks you know much beyond the middle of the afternoon food intake this is really interesting and this is some of the stuff that's emerged over the past few few years human eating patterns have changed dramatically over the past you know uh, since since the industrial revolution um, and particularly since the middle of the 20th century what we used to do uh, pre you know for most of us and, you know, I can remember talking to my grandparents. I mean, the, the big meal of the day was breakfast and, and lunch, what they called dinner, with a, more of a lighter snack in the evening. Um, and as the demands of society have, you know, we rush to work, may not have breakfast, we may have a sandwich at our desk, and we finally get home, and then we have a blowout. And, of course, the great problem with that is that um, uh, food that we consume during the first part of the day is, is, is more likely to be burnt up and used whereas if we have it before we go to bed it's going to be turned to fat and if you have a higher bmi you're going to increase chances of things like obstructive sleep apnea which is where actually the musculature of the throat collapses when you're asleep you can't breathe and so you you know your sleeping partner may detect that you know you, you'll be sort of snoring away and then there'll be a absolute cessation of breathing and then they'll wake up with this great gasp and that's really dangerous and that needs to be looked at by 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 a gp um and then i suppose towards the end of the day is step back um as we've discussed the great problem is anxiety and it's transitioning from a demanding day and do whatever that relaxes you whether it's meditation whether it's mindfulness whether it's reading a, an old favorite book or listening to music just find some way of stepping back so there's lots of things we should be doing during the day. Before bed, reduce the levels of light by approximately 30 minutes. Now, this is important because increased light increases alertness um, and that will delay sleep onset. But there's a lot of nonsense about digital devices. So 
um, looking at a Kindle, looking at an, an iPhone, the, the amount of light you get from these devices, or indeed a computer screen, is very low, and it's not going to have a big effect upon the body clock. It will if it's bright enough and for long enough, but for most uh, uh, cases, it won't. I mean, a study looked at Kindle use, highest intensity of a Kindle, four hours on five consecutive nights, and it delayed sleep onset by, by 10 minutes. And it was just statistically significant. So, you know, uh, it's more of the alerting effect that these devices have rather than the light. Um, and so that's important. Um, try not to use prescription sedatives. The Z drugs, for example, they are what they, they say. They are sedatives. They don't provide a biological mimic for sleep. And in fact, your general practitioner will always advise short term use fine, but not long term use. Same for alcohol. Many people sedate themselves with alcohol to try and get asleep, but it isn't proper sleep. So be careful not to use those sorts of sedatives uh, and to be dependent upon them to get off to sleep. <clears throat> now, one of the problems is that just when we go to bed, it's perhaps the only time that couples get uh, to talk to their partner because of the busy stuff going on during the day. So um, <clears throat> my advice would be don't talk about stressful subjects. So I banned any discussion of family finances before we go to sleep. It's just way too stressful. So, you know, try and find a time for those stressful topics, which you need to do, but don't make it just before you go to bed. Um, <clears throat> so the bedroom itself, we talked about temperature, uh, 18 to 22 degrees um, max um, for that drop in core body temperature. Quiet, if it isn't, then use white noise of some sort. Dark, particularly the street light coming in, which can increase alertness and, 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 and wake, wake you up. Very difficult because the bedroom is often the office these days because of COVID and working from home, but try to separate the sleeping space as much as you can from the workspace because, as we said, it's just another way of generating anxiety. Um, don't clock watch. Many people have one of those illuminated clocks by the bed. Wake up in the middle of the night um, and then you glance and think, oh, crikey, you know, I've only got two hours before the alarm goes off. It doesn't matter. So, so you know, cover the face. It's when the alarm goes off that's the key thing, not that it's two hours before the alarm goes off. And uh, very, very uh, strong advice here, which is don't take these digital and electronic sleep apps too seriously. Um, none of them are supported by any of the sleep um, academies. Uh, none of them are approved uh, as clinical devices. They can give you a pretty good measure of roughly when you went to sleep and roughly when you woke up and how many times you woke up in the middle of the night. But when they start saying, oh, you've had lots of slow wave sleep or REM sleep, or, and, it, and it, it's uh, essentially meaningless. Um, we don't even really know what REM sleep and slow wave sleep are for, let alone, you know, trying to impart some wonderful sort of um, uh, advice about them. So, you, you know, <clears throat> you know if you've had a good night's sleep or not. And many people get these things and then they just throw them away after, after a few months, realizing they're just completely useless. Um, in bed, keep a routine, both free days and work days. Um, also, we're kind of cheap in, in this regard. You know, 30% of our time will be spent in bed. We don't really take much attention. Um, we kind of go for the cheapest pillows and mattresses. And all. But I think it's really important to go to the shops. You know, lie down, sit in them, see if it feels comfortable. Use, use the right sorts of pillows. I mean, make it a real haven that you think, oh, wow, you know, it's a lovely duvet and pillows. Invest in a good, in a good bed and, and, and pillows. Keep bedside lights low because of alertness. Um, uh, you could consider defining the sleeping space with particular oils, like lavender, for example. Um, the, the science behind that isn't that strong, but I do know people um, have used a, a distinctive smell to say, ah, that, that means I'm now in my sleeping space. And in fact, you know, some couples um, take aftershave or, or perfume if they're, if they're, if they're traveling and, and they're because it reminds them of home and it defines the sleeping space away from home. Um, important earplugs, um, you know, um, uh, if your partner snores and you can't stand uh, earplugs, then find an alternative sleeping space. Now, 
to many that's an absolute horror because it, 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 if you sleep separately it me it seems to in some way define the nature of your relationship it doesn't it just means you'll both get better sleep you'll both be more empathetic have a better sense of humor and enjoy the time you've got together during the day better so so don't worry about it um, um and as we've said if you wake up stay calm it's not necessarily the end of sleep you may want to leave the, the, the bed go read somewhere quietly or do something but it's you know don't worry about waking up in the night and that's per very true particularly at the older we get so as you see there's lots of ways of tweaking and enhancing um our sleep and, it, and what works for each of us as individuals.